morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Yesterday we started a new lesson on joy. Actually, we are going to continue going through the fruit of the Spirit. And so we started studying joy yesterday. And to briefly review, we saw yesterday that, first of all, joy is not the same as happiness. Happiness is natural. Happiness is physical. And therefore, happiness is temporary. The world can have some happiness. Sometimes it's even just a fake or a facade appearance of happiness, but they can have some happiness, but it can be here one moment and gone the next because happiness is based on circumstances. And if everything is going good, you're happy. And if things go wrong, then you're not happy anymore. And so happiness is temporary based on circumstances. But joy is not natural. Joy is spiritual. Joy is a fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, 22, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. So we see joy is a fruit of the spirit. It is spiritual. And then we saw also that it is a spiritual force. Joy is a spiritual force. Force. Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we talked about how it is even proven physically and in the medical world that joy does give a literal physical strength. And then we also saw that joy does good like a medicine, a joyful heart is good medicine, New American Standard says in Proverbs 17.22, Proverbs 17.22, a joyful heart is good medicine. And then we were looking at how laughter, which is a practice and exercise of joy, laughter is a practice and exercise of joy. Let me say that again. Laughter is a practice and exercise of joy. And as I had even just done a simple Google search looking for laughter as medicine and right up at the top, it comes up this statement, medical statement, laughter decreases stress hormones and increases immune cells and infection-fighting antibodies, thus improving your resistance to disease. So laughter improves your resistance to disease. And I've even heard testimonies of people who actually got healed. I'm thinking of one particular testimony, somebody that got healed simply by watching funny movies that made them laugh. And, you know, not all movies are as funny as they say they're supposed to be, but they watched movies that really, really made them laugh. And as they laughed, they laughed their way, way to health and were healed of even a, a death sentence disease, um, diagnosis. And so, Laughter has been proven even in the scientific medical world to be a healing agent to help in the healing of the physical body. Well, that goes right back to scripture that says in Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine. And let me make the statement again that I made before. Laughter is a practice and exercise of joy. Joy will sustain you and carry you when natural circumstances get tough. When natural circumstances get tough, when things around you are hard, joy will sustain you and carry you through. Praise God.
And then we also looked at yesterday that in the area that we're still looking at joy as a spiritual force, a force. It is an anointing from God. Joy is an anointing from God. And it says in Psalm 45, 7, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy, by anointing you with the oil of joy. And then we read Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. But in verse 3, it says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. And we mentioned that oil is the biblical symbol of anointing. Oil is the biblical symbol for anointing. And so we see again, the oil of joy. It can also be in this verse identified as the anointing of joy. Well, what does anointing do? And then we looked at Isaiah 10, 27. The last line says the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And as I mentioned yesterday, a lot of people misquote that verse and they say the anointing breaks the yoke. That is wrong. The anointing does not break. The Bible does not say break. It says destroy. The yoke shall be destroyed. There's a difference between break and destroy. Something that is broken could be mended and put back together. You don't want your yoke broken and then mended again and the yoke mended and put back on you. No, but you want it destroyed, destroyed, obliterated completely. It can never be used again. So the yoke is destroyed, destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. And so we closed yesterday by showing you that joy is an anointing. It is the oil of joy. And therefore, as an anointing, the anointing is kind of two sided, like a two sided coin. On one side, it will destroy your yokes and remove your burdens, set you free. And on the other side, it empowers you to do what you cannot do. Anointing comes on a person to set them free. And anointing comes on a person to enable them and empower them to do what they cannot do. It is a supernatural power from God. Anointing is a supernatural power from God, empowering a person to do what they cannot do. They do it with the power of God. And so joy is an anointing. So joy will destroy the yoke, remove the burden and help set you free. Particularly as we read in Isaiah 61, it'll set you free from mourning and from heaviness. From mourning, that's M-O-U-R-N, mourning and sorrow, grief, and from heaviness. And so joy can set you free and destroy the yokes and burdens of grief, sorrow, mourning, despair, heaviness. It can destroy that yoke and then it can empower you. And there again, we go back to strength. Nehemiah 8, 10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so it is a supernatural spiritual strength. Joy is a supernatural spiritual strength. It is the power of God coming on you to destroy your yokes, remove your burdens, set you free and empower you to do what you cannot do in your own strength. To empower you to do what you cannot do in your own strength. And joy will carry you and strengthen 
and energize you and empower you when natural circumstances get tough. Amen. Praise God. So joy is a spiritual force. It is strength. It is medicine. It is an anointing, which is power from God to set you free and to empower you to do what you cannot do. Glory to God. Now, let's look and talk about what, how can we receive joy? Yes, it is. As I said before, it is a fruit of the spirit. It is created, created in you, birthed in you, planted in your spirit when you are born again. The recreated human spirit, the new creation, receives the seeds of the fruit of the spirit so that love is planted in you as a seed when you're born again. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. All of the fruit of the spirit are planted in your spirit, created in your spirit, birthed in your spirit. When you're born again, it's in there. You've got the seed of it in your spirit. So, we know, first of all, it does come from God, but it is created and born in you when you're born again. But then you can and you need to feed and water the, the seeds, all of those seeds, feed and water the, the love, joy, peace, all of those. And then you practice and exercise them. Feed them the fruit of the spirit, water them and practice and exercise them. That is in a nutshell, how you increase and grow in all of the fruit of the spirit. It's all the same in a nutshell, how you increase, how you grow in all of the fruit of the spirit is by feeding it, watering it, exercising it, practicing it. But let us specifically look at joy and different ways to increase joy is by thinking on those things that are causes for joy. And I'm talking about from the Bible. Those things that are causes for joy joy. And let's do a scriptural study, biblical study of what are some causes for joy. In Isaiah 61, again, verse 10, look at verse 10. It says in the King James version, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. First of all, one of the causes for joy is your salvation. Your salvation. Your salvation is a cause for you to rejoice. You should rejoice in the Lord and be joyful because he has clothed you in the garments of salvation or because he has given you salvation. When you think about how it says in Colossians chapter one, that we are translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son to think about how you have been delivered from the power of Satan and you have been brought into the kingdom, how you've been delivered from darkness and brought into the light that your life is not the same as it used to be when you were in darkness, when you were in the world. If you ever were, some people were born again as small children, but even then we've all experienced times of, of experiencing the world and to some degree more or less for different people. And how, when you operate in the kingdom of God, you see 
the benefits of God manifest in your life. And so we can rejoice in our salvation and in the benefits of salvation. In Acts chapter 16, Acts chapter 16, verse 34. Remember when the Philippian jailer um, got born again, Paul and Silas were thrown into jail. And then at midnight, they were praising the Lord and the jailer brought them out, cleaned their wounds, and he was born again and baptized in the middle of the night. And in verse 34, Acts 16, 34, it says the jailer was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole family. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole family. You need to remind yourself to be thankful for your salvation and the benefits of salvation. Just to think about, hey, you're not going to hell. When you die, you're going to heaven when you leave this earth. And that's something to rejoice about. Thank you, Lord. We're delivered from hell. We're not going to hell. We're going to heaven. Praise God. And to rejoice in your salvation and the benefits of salvation. Praise the Lord. And then another cause for joy is actually thankfulness which we've just mentioned being thankful for your salvation, but thankfulness and praise, thankfulness and praise produce joy. Bottom line is if you are sad, you are not thankful. If you are sad, you are not thankful. Sadness is a result of, of unthankfulness and self-centeredness. Just looking at yourself and woe is me, it is a self-pity. Sadness is a self-pity. And it is unthankful for the good things that you have. A person who is sad is an unthankful person. You cannot be thankful And be sad at the same time. It is impossible. So if you find yourself, and this is a reminder for all of us, I have to slap myself and remind myself, Cherry, be thankful. We all have to remind ourselves of these keys, these spiritual principles, because yes, life does get tedious. Tedious. Life sometimes gets tough. But we have to remind ourselves of these things. And that's why I'm pointing out to you specific keys for joy. And this is another important one. It is remember to be thankful. Thankfulness and praise produce joy. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 30 verse 19 says from them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing. So songs of thanksgiving go hand in hand with the sound of rejoicing, rejoicing. And remember what Paul wrote, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice to rejoice actually means to put on joy again. To rejoice means to put on joy again. And like I had talked about last week about love, you put on love. Well, guess what? You also put on joy like a garment. Put on joy like a garment. Rejoice in the Lord. When you need joy, then rejoice. When you need joy, then rejoice, put on joy again by thankfulness and praise. And what do you rejoice in? Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Rejoice. Rejoicing goes hand in hand with thanksgiving and praise. And that all working together, rejoicing, thankfulness, praise, these produce joy. So when you are down, then 
cheer yourself up as the psalmist wrote, lift up your countenance and start rejoicing in the Lord and being thankful for what you have, what God has done. And we're going to be getting to that again in a moment, but being thankful. And so let me take it to the next point. Then another cause for joy is God himself. God is a, is the biggest cause, the biggest reason for us to have joy because we have the Lord. We are not in this world without God. We are not in this world without hope. We are not in this world without a helper, without a teacher, without a guide, without a comforter, without a healer, without a provider who will meet our needs. This is the biggest one. We have joy because of God. Joy comes from God, but then we rejoice in God and in the Lord. We rejoice and have joy in God. Hallelujah. In Habakkuk 3.18, it says, I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And then, of course, I quoted to you Philippians. Actually, yeah, Philippians 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. So rejoice in the Lord. Habakkuk 3.18, I will joy in the God of my salvation. God himself is the reason for our joy. He is the source of our joy. Our joy comes from him and he is the cause for our joy. We can be joyful in our God. Praise the Lord. I want to show you one of the very little known names of God. There is a name of God in the Bible that very few people know. And it is in, in Psalm 43, verse 4. Psalm 43, 4 says, Then will I go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my del- delight. To God, my joy and my delight, I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Now here we see in the Hebrew text, a name of God. You know, the name L, E-L, is one of the names of God. It actually means God. And then there's Elohim, El Elyon, different Hebrew names of God. Well, this verse gives us another name of God. And in the Hebrew, it is El Simcha Gili. El Simcha Gili. What does it mean? My joy and my delight is it is in the NIV. In the King James, it is God, my exceeding joy. God, my exceeding joy. God, my exceeding joy. And then the Young's literal translation is God, the joy of my rejoicing, the joy of my rejoicing. King James, my exceeding joy, the Young's literal, the joy of my rejoicing. This is a name of God, El Simcha Gili, El Simcha Gili. One of God's names is God, my exceeding joy. God, the joy of my rejoicing. So God, one of his names is our God of rejoicing, our our joy. Praise the Lord. And so God himself is the reason and the cause for our joy. He is the source of our joy and he is the cause of our joy. Praise the Lord. And let me share one more scripture today. Psalm 89, Psalm 89 16 and 17. It says, they rejoice in your name all day long 
they exult in your your righteousness for you are their glory and strength and by your favor you exalt our horn so this again is talking about the lord and talk talking about being uh praising the lord and the people of god it says talking about the people of god psalm 89 16 and 17 they rejoice in your name all day long. They exult in your righteousness for you are their glory and strength. So God is the cause of our joy. We rejoice in his name. We rejoice in his righteousness. We rejoice in his glory and strength. Praise the Lord. Now I'm almost out of time again. We're going to continue studying this joy again tomorrow, but I want you to today focus on rejoicing in the Lord. Put on the garment of praise and thankfulness to receive the joy of the Lord, a spiritual strength and a spiritual anointing from God to give you strength and power today. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say it, rejoice in the Lord. Now join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.